welcome back to my channel. This is the 16-inch MacBook Pro update that some of you guys have been reaching out to ask me about. So here is the reminders of the specs of the MacBook Pro that I bought. Overall experience with this Mac is that it is a Mac that just works very well. Very, very well. <laughs> Over the past two months, using this MacBook Pro has been pretty seamless and easy. Multitasking has been so fabulous. I can open up Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut Pro and loads of tabs on Chrome and just use it with ease. There is less of the annoying rainbow circle that keeps going zoom, zoom, zoom each time your Mac hangs. And I want to say that editing on Final Cut Pro 10 on this MacBook Pro has been such an Ease. I film and edit in 1080p and I can finally understand what people mean by buttery smooth edit. I can just scroll through the timeline without any lag and crashes. This is like my first time editing and filming in 4K using a good camera and my laptop so I'm actually kind of like happy at how good it works out to be because not only does it not lag but like most of the time I can see things in like high quality so it doesn't like reduce the image resolution as I scroll through the timelines. I am not like doing a lot of like crazy graphics and stuff that's why it's not hanging or anything but this is like just note this is a 4k footage that I am editing right here so I am kind of like happy at how things turn out. This is very unlike my previous 15 inch MacBook Pro, I think it was a 2017 model and that was like just slow. The keyboards, after typing on this keyboard for past two months, I think I understand what people mean by it is more comfortable. Even though I did not have a lot of complaints about the previous generation keyboard, I love this keyboard. Really comfortable, it is not loud, it doesn't like pierce my ears, it doesn't annoy people. It just feels nice to touch. The previous generation keyboard, I would feel like, you know, it's very hard. I feel like this has more cushion. I, I'm not sure if it's just me or you guys feel the same. And of course, the physical escape key is awesome. That was something that I didn't know I need in my life. I feel like my life has been made so much simpler. This is like a lot of minutes to be spent talking about the keyboard, but it's just part of the entire experience of using the Mac. And if we're going to talk about keyboard and experience, the trackpad is still my favorite part of using the Mac. It's just one of the best trackpads I've ever used and I'm sure a lot of people online do agree with me. It's not a new thing, but it's just really part of the experience. The bigger, larger screen. 16 inch compared to a 15 inch may be a very very minor upgrade but I think I cannot go back to the 15 inch anymore. You can definitely tell that the 16 inch has more screen estate especially when you're editing and you need all the estate that you need. So I enjoy it and I don't think I will be able to go back to 13 inch anymore. Yeah. Previously, there were complaints about popping speakers and hissing sounds that the MacBook Pro produces. Currently, there is none except when I force shut down my MacBook Pro, I do hear the hissing sound. It hisses at me as if to tell me that, shh, damn, why do you shut me down like that? <sighs> I'll try to reproduce or find any footage of the hissing sound for you guys. If I can't, just know that it's like a very, very, very rare problem and it seldom appears. So that is a good thing, right? <laughs> but popping speakers, there were definitely none. I think it was just a software bug and they fixed it in an update. So that's kind of good. Speakers, I absolutely loved speakers. I know that MacBook Pros, even the previous generation, they had like a reputation for really, really good speakers, but this one definitely triumphed the previous generation, especially when you're watching a movie with people. So you can definitely enjoy that like great ambient sound. It's like a surround sound that you feel, but I usually have headphones on when I'm alone and I have a home part of me. So if I want to listen to music, I usually use that because that speaker is just awesome. So next, we're going to talk about some of the problems I have with this MacBook Pro. So if you guys are new on this channel and you don't know what happened previously, you can check out my video. But summarize, this is actually a replacement MacBook Pro. The first 16 inch that I received from Apple was actually really, really faulty and defective. Did not manage to start up on my second day of use so that was pretty screwed up but thank god for a replacement yay so some of you guys have actually reached out to me to ask if like there were any other problems with this macbook pro there is actually none so far that i want to point out but one of the problems 
Okay, I wouldn't even call it problems, I would say inconvenience, battery drain when I plug this into my display. The LG display that I currently have used to be able to power up my MacBook Pro just with one cable. So I only have to use one wire to connect the display as well as to the power supply, which the LG monitor supplies. But with this MacBook Pro, it uses, it houses a bigger battery. Yes, somehow the LG monitor is just not able to supply this baby with enough power. So currently this is the battery live and, and we have only the display thing, the display cable connected to the LG screen here. Photos and editing stuff, we're gonna do some major edits. All the chrome tabs are on and we'll see if the battery <sighs> drains. It definitely will because I've seen it. Yeah. 3.36 p.m. and the battery life is at 93 percent and you only have one thing plugged in. In that case, I would need an extra USB-C cable that is connected to the power supply so that the battery does not drain. LG monitor is no longer able to single-handedly power this baby through heavier task. And that also means that I have to use two USB-C ports for my display as well as power supply especially when I am doing heavy tasks on this and that means that I have one less port to connect other stuff to. I feel like this can be easily solved by getting a USB-C harp so that's just one minor minor thing. Second thing that I see a lot is touch bar crashes. There have been like complaints online that the touch bar crashes and yes, I experienced that as well. But it's not as common as people complain is at random moments when the touch bar just don't work and in order for me to reduce the brightness, I literally have to go to the settings and display and reduce the brightness. For me, this problem has been very minor. It's not a big deal to me. I'm not sure about you guys. And third, noisy fans. This MacBook Pro will definitely heat up when you're doing heavy processing like editing. A lot of multitasking, it will definitely do that and that's when the fan goes on. That is actually kind of good and bad. This baby is still hot enough that I cannot put it directly on my lap but I would have to like put a pillow underneath when I'm sitting on a couch to edit so that it doesn't burn my laps. But if it's on the table like this, on the surface, it's not that hot, it's just super noisy. In a good light, the fans are not afraid to turn on and be noisy so as to cool your Mac. So I guess that's kind of good, I hope. Maybe I'm biased. And next, FaceTime camera. This is a footage of me talking about it. Hey guys, coming at you from the MacBook Pro speaker and the FaceTime camera. This is still the 720p camera blur, blur, definitely. But I was thinking unless two of you guys who are doing FaceTime have really, really great internet connection, 720 camera is fine unless, unless with a 1080p camera and a sucky internet, it is still better than the 720p camera, which is probably likely the case. I have been talking for a while now, but you guys can tell how good the mic quality is from the MacBook Pro. That is something I'm super stoked about. But I mean, I guess like one reason why people want this to be a better camera is so that, you know, you don't have to have an extra camera. You can record yourself, you can film videos using this FaceTime camera alone, but too bad Apple didn't give us that. So hoping for a better camera in the next upgrade. Fingers crossed, I highly doubt that will be possible because... <sighs> but who knows, right? Who knows? Okay, back to the main cam. So this was what I found out from some of you guys who reached out to me. There were other people who also experienced the same problem of this MacBook Pro, the 16 inch, crashing and not being able to start up or having screen problems when it was newly purchased. And that is actually quite a shocker, but I would say that like I've seen the online reviews about it, I've seen what people said online, the defective MacBook Pros, the 40 ones that we received were just the error, 1%, 3% error that is part of the production process that didn't actually pass the quality assurance test. Overall, I have no complaints with the Mac that I bought and I'm pretty happy with it. So fingers crossed, I hope there's no other big problems with this MacBook Pro. I didn't purchase any Apple Care, so 
Hopefully nothing bad happens. So who is this MacBook Pro for? And should you spec things out? I feel like these are the two questions that we as consumers ask a lot. And I would say that this MacBook Pro, the spec that I got would be for like creators, creative individuals, or like programmers, developers, people who use a lot of memory who do a lot of intensive tasks on their macbook pro there are definitely windows laptops that have the same specs as this mac priced at a lower price so what makes this mac so worth it especially if you are in the apple ecosystem like if you own an iphone an ipad having a mac would really make things easier for you airdrop continuity sidecar all these are really really awesome features that the Mac offers to you. And I would say that MacBook Pros, they last. My very first Mac, which is the MacBook Air, easily lasted me four to five or maybe six years. And if you're lucky enough to have a dedicated Apple Store, or Apple Genius Bar in your country, you can actually bring your stuff there to get fixed. If things are still in warranty, you can actually get a one-to-one -one exchange. So that's like kind of a plus, but I know that there are some arguments about Apple's Genius Bar services. So far, I have received kind of good service, so I cannot really like fault Apple or anything because I'm just speaking from experience. As a Mac user for the past six, seven years, I would say I have no regrets changing over from Windows to Mac. I know some of you may disagree on this, but call me um an apple fan if you will but i love apple so overall i really really truly enjoy using the macbook pro as i said from the start it is a mac that works very well i am very happy with this purchase no regrets there so this is something that may interest some of you guys who are interested in finding a travel adapter for your macbook pro because of the increase in battery capacity of this macbook pro you will need a more powerful power adapter power brick so there's this thing that i saw on kickstarter this is super cool it's called the hyperjuice 100 watt gan power adapter gan is actually gallium nitride it's basically this tag that allows you to miniaturize the components and this means that the power adapter is definitely small and according to 9 to 5 mac that did a review on it it is actually 50 percent smaller than the charging brick that we currently have here 50 percent smaller than this I am super interested in it. I actually just ordered one and if you guys are still interested, you can actually check out the Kickstarter. I'll link it in the description below. It comes with two USB-A and two USB-C ports so you can charge a lot of devices. It's sort of like an all-in-one power brick. So I ordered it and it is coming in March. So stay tuned and subscribe for that unboxing and that review. I would love to share it with you guys. So anyway, thank you for watching. This is just a very, very quick update actually not very quick it's more like a detailed update of the macbook pro my review about this and i hope this helps you if you're interested in getting this or something similar and you want to know more things about this and you have questions about this feel free to ask me in the comment section below i will get back to you as soon as i can or you can find me on instagram and twitter just drop me a dm and if i know it i would definitely reply i hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already make sure you click the subscribe button because I really, 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 really do appreciate every single one of you for watching my video. So subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss out any of the videos that I'll be uploading real soon. Stay minty and cheery. I will see you guys in my very next video. Bye!